Uh, good evening and welcome to Money Matters. I'm Brian Cahoot from HJ Wealth Management. Uh, my special co-host is Dave Ebner from Merrill Lynch. David, how are you? Great, Brian. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Good to see you as always. Um, we touch about th this a lot when we're together, um, and it's, it seems to be missing in the mainstream financial media, but you know, asset allocation time horizons. Um, how do you think about that with your clients? Well, I mean, it's it's paramount, right? It, it's exactly, you know, uh, I, I think you're, you hit the, the nail on the head, Brian. Uh, the mainstream media talks about what happened yesterday, last week, and definitely what's happening today. Uh, and reality is investors really should be focusing on their time horizon. And you put together, and what you said, an asset allocation, which is just a fancy name for how much money do you have in stocks and bonds and cash and real estate and whatever investments you have uh, and what percentage in each, right? right? And all of it depends on how long you need that money or when you're going to use that money. So if you're going to use it for something like a college education, well, if you're son or daughter is a year old, you know, in about yeah, 18 yeah, years, right. they're going to go to school, right? If your son and daughter's 10 years, you know it's about eight years. If your son and daughter's 16, you know it's about two or three years. Right. And, and so it's really that simple on a, on a college planning standpoint. Retirement's a little, little uh, different, right? Because you're generally, people are planning for the retirements, uh, you know, in their, hopefully in their 20s, but mostly in their 30s and then 40s, and people get serious in their right, 50s, right. right? But even in their 50s, and let's just take a, you know, an average couple in their 50s, or an average couple in their 50s is probably going to work for another 10 to 15 or even 20 sure. years now, uh, and not because they have to, but because people want to. Right. We're, we're living longer, healthier, and so forth. But then they could be in uh, retirement for 20 or 30 years. So, you know, if you live till you're 85, 88, 90 years old, you know, that's, that's a long, and, and we are now, people are living to their hundreds. Yeah, absolutely, I have clients in their hundreds, I'm sure you do. I, so, yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I have a 92-year-old client that drives from North Jersey to see me. I mean, it's, <laughs> just a, it's amazing. But anyhow, we're living longer, so really you should look at your time horizon. It, it's paramount on developing an asset allocation model or strategy to help you get. And then you start looking at investments, right? So... We know that a, you know, a 30 year bond is going to pay you X amount of interest rates, right? And if you have a 30 year corporate bond, it's going to pay you X amount of right. interest rate. And if you own stocks of that same corporation, they're probably going to pay you more than they pay the bonds, right? right. Because why would the owner of the company pay their loaners more money? So, right. And then you, you kind of manage between the, the, the two or three uh, or four investment uh, buckets, if you will. And you, know, you should come up with some type of successful investment strategy. That's great advice. I mean, you know, the media makes you think you should do something every day, which is probably every the minute. wrong thing. Oh, yeah, second to second. What do you see the common mistakes people do make about their asset allocation or time horizon? Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 well, I, more, more fact, the adjustments. I, I think, you know, it's interesting. Um, online investing uh, or the ability to look at your assets literally every minute of the right. day yeah. uh, has probably created... Uh, from a behavior standpoint, a negative effect for investors because uh, I, I think it's interesting in our industry how we make green positive and red negative, yes. right? There's a program to help you with that, There's isn't there? There's a program to help you with that. <laughs> and, and if you think about that, as investors, you've, what, what investors really should be thinking about is buying things at discounts, right. right? So if you buy things at discounts, in our world, that would be red, right? right? right. But what happens is people like when things are green, people have a little pep in their step. If one, you know, I'm sure you have clients like this. If a client picked a certain company and that company goes up a lot, yeah. they feel a little, you yeah, know, absolutely. I know a little smarter. bit more, yeah, a little absolutely. smarter, yeah, a little right. smarter. But reality is it's all cycles, right? And, and we have good economic data on this that stretch back. You know, 200, 300 years, right. we've watched these companies go up and down, ebb and flows, the economy ebbs and flows, uh, the politicians ebb and flow everything. You know, there's right. all this ebb and flows. So investors really should be thinking of what is of value today when they're investing their money? Uh, what time horizon are they going to use that money and when, when are they going to take that money back, uh, either sell it for a profit or uh, take the, the income stream from it, whatever it may be. Uh, and that will help them develop a longer and have the longer perspectives. Don't look at where your investment's going to be in a year or three right. years or five years. Look at when you're going to actually use it. Another thing you, you, you mentioned earlier about um, the retirement. 
you know, so many investors that I talk to uh, before they become clients tell me, well, I need a certain amount of money on the day you retire. I'm like, that's fantastic, but what if you're in retirement for 20 and 30 right. years? It doesn't really matter that first day. You're not yeah. going to spend all your money the first day. And that's a great point. I think, you know, people don't understand retirement, it's not a destination, right? Right. Well said. And you have this long time horizon that's unknown. Right. And you don't liquidate every investment you have because you now retire. That's right. right? The, the, so. the day, the first day you retire, like, all right, right. let's go to cash. Yeah. Let's spend our money. Right, right. right. It, and, it, it, you know, it's, what's, what's amazing is, you know, we live in... Uh, and I think we, we've done a couple of shows where we talked about the international investing. And we live in just a remarkable period of time where, uh, you know, we have 7 billion people on this planet who are living at a higher level right. than they ever have in the history of the world. We have uh, less people in poverty. Yeah. Uh, we're watching, you know, countries like China go from, you know, basically substance farmers to manufacturers. They're capitalists, of, right? They're Absolutely. capitalists, yeah. and and that's it's it's a wonderful thing because it breeds uh, it, it breeds peace, right? It, it it allows companies to do trade and countries to do trade. It allows uh, you know people's lives longevity. People are living longer, healthier, and so forth. And but. There's all the naysayers, right? All there, if there's a negative news story, it becomes a negative news story. I and mean, if there's a, you know, a civil disobedience here, it becomes all the rage, right? right? Yeah. If there's a, uh, you know, if a product fails, it becomes oh, look at this company. And and again, I think we, I think it's, I, I, I joke with my wife when we talk about uh, the world is, I say we always look at car accidents. We don't look at good drivers. Right. We don't drive down the road and say, "Ah, that guy's doing really well, right?" <laughs> Good but job. There's, there's a car accident. Everyone slows. Right. You're down in a traffic it. jam because of it, right? So, so you know the, the the media has figured it out, right? If it if it bleeds, it leads, right. and and I think that uh, you know the, the media and because the media is 24/7, uh, either on your phone or on your uh, on your TV or computer, people are starting to you know they're saturated with this, right. and they feel I think you said it best. They feel like they they need to react every minute. Yeah, or the opposite, right? They don't react at all. So, you know, one of my questions is, this client comes to you, how do you get them back, like, in the market? Say they got out or they have cash, and like, well, I don't know the perfect time to put this in the market. Yeah. Right? As yeah. if you would know, yeah. right? Or yeah. me, right? For I, that I, fact. I, <laughs> so. yeah, yeah, generally speaking, I tell them the perfect time is any day that ends in Y. So you're, you're good <laughs> right, with that. Right. No, so. you know, it, it's um, uh, Benjamin Graham, uh, who's you know a superior investor? Was a superior investor and, and uh, Warren Buffett's mentor. And Warren right? Buffett's yeah. mentor, and, and you know, he wrote he wrote a series of books on investing, and uh, in all of his books, in all of his writings, he always goes back to systematic investing or what we call dollar cost right. averaging, and he says, you know, it's a good strategy. You should look into it. I was I was <laughs> laugh about <laughs> that, you know, but reality is in most people's retirement accounts. Uh, they systematically invest. Yeah, it happens for them. It comes out of their paycheck. They don't know. They right? don't know, right? And uh, but then they get this lump sum, and they go, "Oh, I don't want to invest right. this because the market's too high or too low." And and they may be right, uh, but again, it goes back to their time horizon and systematically invest. If you're going to, you know, in, invest for 20 years, and you can spend that money over 20 years, or you can spend it over 12 months, or whatever. But you need to come up with a way to systematically invest money because. We know one thing for sure. If your money is sitting in cash, you're going to make the lowest return. Right. Regardless of what the returns are, it's going to be because- And your real return has to be negative, right? For the, for the most part. <laughs> more importantly, the real return is negative because people don't factor in inflation. Right. So as I explain to investors a lot, is investing is about purchasing power. Right. We're trying to generate purchasing power for you in the future. Not today, right. in the future. So the volatility or the up and down of the market is great because if we invest in something and it goes down, we can systematically invest more of it. And if it goes down more, we can systematically invest more of it. And when it goes up, we systematically invest, but we get less shares. Right. So a systematic investment allows you to buy more shares when they're cheap or more investments when they're cheap and less investments when they're high. And that's really what you're trying. You're, you're, you're trying to accumulate this mass of assets that's going to generate income for you that you can live the rest of your life comfortably, worry-free, hopefully, right. uh, and more importantly, pass money on to the next generation if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I and mean, there's a great point. I mean, you know, two things that frustrate me about our education system is the two concepts everyone needs to understand is compounding and risk and return are related. Yet, you can get you could become a doctor, an engineer, and never hear those words compounding or 
you said it. You know, why would you get a higher rate of return to take less risk? Right. The, the world can't work that way, right? <laughs> so it hasn't yet. Yet, everyone wants to tell you it does, right? I, you know, risk-free trading. Yeah. Like it can't. It doesn't. Can't persist long term. So. No, you're right. You know, personal finance is definitely not taught in our educational system, or at least it's not taught uh, uh, world worldwide or, or, or globally. Um, you know, but I am seeing I am seeing uh, some changes. You know, I know some high school students. Yeah, that there's take, a movement on their foot, right? It takes so, personal yeah. finance courses, which I think is interesting. I think that that's going to help people uh, become better investors longer term. Uh, but you're right, compounding, is, you know, again, if you, you take a company like Coca-Cola, and Coca-Cola has a 30-year bond out there that is going to pay 5%. Well, the, the, the managers who came up with the 5% for 30 years assumes that they're going to compound their money more than 5%, right? right? Or, or that would be a foolish bet right. because they're borrowing money at 5% for 30 years as a company. So they believe that they're going to be able to sell products and services or whatever they're selling uh, higher than a 5%. And if you do some minimal investigation, like you know, A, look at their track record. Have they been right in the past? Coca-Cola probably has a 100, 150 year old track record, so you can get some good data there, right? right? Uh, you can follow their earnings, and what's interesting is you know you, you generally follow. You'll see the earnings. Actually, matter of fact, it's very interesting. We're in an interesting time because we're in a low interest rate environment, right? right? So that means companies can go out and issue debt at low very interest rates, right. very and which is smart. And and uh, you know last year we saw Apple, Apple do that, it, yeah. which was a fantastic move, right? And uh, and that their their debt got eaten up. Everybody right. wanted it, which is really remarkable. Right. But. Um, Many companies are trading right now where their dividend on their stock is higher than their bond yield. Right. Now that's an interesting phenomenon yeah. that we haven't seen since probably the Great Depression. Right. Right. So, so again, people are pricing these these bonds actually at a higher value than they're pricing the underlying the company stock, right. that pays the that pays the right. the, the, the interest coupon. Right. So again, it's an interesting dynamic. So that's here. what I find like. It seems like people have the disconnect with the company and how the world really works, right? Because if you know Apple goes out of business, you don't feel very good about that bond anymore, right? You, at least you shouldn't, so, right? right? I mean, so. yeah, uh, you know, Apple—they have a lot of cash, so maybe yeah, that's, no, a, right, that's bad a bad example, right? But, but uh, you're right. Uh, obviously, you know, the, the the bond holders stand in front of the stockholders, but they don't stand in front of the creditors. Yep. And there's only so much to go around, and it, it, at the very best, it's going to be a legal process. Right. It's, it's not, you know, it's not like, hey, here's my bond. Let me. It's not like the old bonds where you had the uh, coupons. Yeah, you clip the coupons. And you and you, you yeah. send it in, you get your money. Right. It doesn't work like that. You know, they they don't have to pay you out. But you're right. And again, that goes back to what you were saying about our education system. Our education system doesn't teach people. Uh, that you know, bonds are a loan. You're right. you're loaning money to a company or. Yeah, a I mean, minister. just the, to me, the basic capital market structure, how it actually works, like how money gets into the system and why there's different rates of returns. Right. You know that would. Um, I, we manage a lot of 401k plans, and I get this question all the time from planners: Is can I lose all the money, all my money in the stock market? And I always say, No, you cannot. I said, You could lose all your money buying one stock. I said, if you lose all your money in the stock market, I don't care because right. I'm not here. Right, right, <laughs> I'm right, out of right, business. You're right, out of business. Right, 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 right We have right. bigger problems. Right. Right. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, you, you, you I mean, you're, you're talking about a possibility. Is there a possibility of let's just take the S and P 500, which is the largest right. 500 companies in the United States? Is it a possibility those 500 business goes goes out? Sure, absolutely. Probability highly unlikely. Right. Why? And all at once. <laughs> all at right, once. Right. You know, right. virtually impossible. Right. right? You're, you're, you're obviously we're Armageddon right. is what exactly. we're talking about. Yeah. But again, it's not rational either. When you think about, it. if you you know you, you think about the last hundred years of our society, you know we've had World War One and World War Two, and we've had depressions and recessions, and we had famine, and we had Cold War, and we had warm war, lukewarm right. war. We you know we had. Uh, terrorists. Yeah, parts of a Cold War again now. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. We had terrorists run planes in the buildings. And these are really Armageddon situations, right? That, I mean, that, that's right. what we're talking about. But companies still moved through this. Now, the answer is why, right? Well, the basic answer is the population, right? If you have people, again, we have 7 billion people on the planet. 
7 billion people wake up every morning, they have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea, right? And they drive their bikes or cars or right. trains or planes or something to some place of employment. That's commerce, right? right? That, that commerce doesn't disappear because of a, a slowdown in the economy. Yes, a slowdown, uh, you know, we talked in another show about unemployment. Yeah, you know, let's say, let's say you have a, a 7 to 10% unemployment. Well, that means that 90 to 93 percent. Right. Really bad for that seven to ten. Very bad. Right. But, but the, the other, other half is still working, right? right? And right. and I remember during uh, the the Great Recession, as it's being called now, the 2008 and 2009, 2000, of the number of traffic jams I was in, and right. I was thinking to myself, how many people are unemployed? Because yeah, right. I'm always I'm in seeing it. Right. Yeah, I'm right. always in a traffic jam. Yeah. The lines didn't get any shorter, right? I mean, lines uh, yeah. are yeah. The, the malls were packed. Right. I you know it right. you know it's it, so. Again, I, I think that, again, that the media takes these numbers and this information and they dissect it. And you said it great. It's very bad for those 7 to 10 percent. But the reality is the large majority are still going to work, still providing food for their family, which is, again, right. commerce, right? Sure. right? going to their doctors or taking their medicines, right, which is commerce, right? right. Filling their gas tanks, which is commerce. Right. It's all commerce. And I, and, and then if you take that globally, I, I, I think you look at countries like India and China and Brazil and even Russia, um, where if you just watch these countries go from, I mean, I remember, I remember in the 80s uh, being in high school, and we talked about Russia having no food on their shelves. Right, right. The shopping shelves, right. no food, and you know now they have shopping malls like right. we do, and it's just it, it, it's a dramatic change in one generation. Yeah, great. We we talked about Armageddon. I have a question, a gold question for you. Do you have time for a question? Sure. All right. The question comes from um, Tim De Simone. He's from Exton. Um, question is: Is gold a good investment if interest rates go up? Yeah. So thanks for the 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 message or the question there, Tim. Um, I, I think. What you're referring to is inflation, and uh, gold used to be an inflation hedge uh, when we were connected to the, what's called the gold standard, when, when our, the dollar, uh, the U.S. dollar was connected to how much gold was in Fort Knox. Uh, we were, came off the gold standard, and gold is a very interesting, um, very interesting commodity, and that's really what I want to say it is. So gold does not pay you any income. If you buy gold, you need to pay to store it or, or have it there. Uh, you're hoping that your gold value is going to go up. That's what you're betting on. I would say that it's a very poor um, uh, investment if interest rates go up. If interest rates go up, you want something that's going to go up with those interest rates. So uh, you can, what's called ladder out a bond portfolio, where you have different bond interest rates at different maturities. Uh, over time, and as the bond becomes mature, you go out longer on the on the yield curve, which, which is a time horizon, uh, which we talked about earlier, uh, which will be a better investment for you. If we have some type of hyperinflation and gold goes up dramatically, uh, you would be right only if you sold the gold. And what happens in those markets, as we've seen in the past, people don't sell those gold, their, their commodity, because they think it's going to continue to go up. Uh, Bitcom is a great example of this. And uh, so gold as an investment, you got to think of what we use gold for now. And right now, gold is used for nothing more than ornaments, right? Uh, watches, rings, those type of things. We don't use it in our manufacturing anymore. We've come up with man-made products that are better than this. So. Uh, so, so the answer, short answer to your question, Tim, no, gold is not a good uh, investment if interest rates go up. But as always, our shows are taped, so please contact your financial advisor uh, or CPA or CFA or whomever, and maybe they can give you a, a better answer than I, I can give you. That was a great answer. And unlike some of the commercials, gold doesn't always go up, is what you're saying? <laughs> it, 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 again, it, it, it has been proven that it doesn't. <laughs> That's true. Uh, there's a whole decade that they go up. Um, great, great question, great answer from um, David, our expert. Um, if you have a question, you can send the question into Money Matters, 205 East Levering Mill Road, that's in Ballot Kinwood, PA, 19004. Or you can always email your question to moneymatterstv at gmail.com, and we'll get you a great answer like David provided, Tim. Thank you. Um, we were talking about asset allocation, accumulating money. Let's turn the, turn the table a little bit. 
baseball. We're all getting up there in years. We're going to see this wave of baby boomers retiring. What do you think is going to happen from the distribution strategy? You know, it was easy to accumulate and see your money grow. Now you got to start taking it out of your portfolios. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Right. What, do, what do you see clients asking you? How yeah, do I do it? What do I do? Yeah. I mean, I, so obviously, uh, so when you start taking money out of your portfolio, and let's just say that you have uh, a taxable account, right, which is the income and any gains or, or that any realized gains every year are taxed uh, on an annual basis. You, albeit dividends, if they're qualified, are taxed at a lower right. tax rate, 15 to 20% as opposed to ordinary yep. income rates. You have IRAs or qualified plans, 401ks, SEPs, and so forth. Uh, this money can grow tax deferred, uh, and then once you take it out, it's tax as ordinary income. There's some nuances to that. If you have company stock, sure. you can move it over. Right. But but for the most part, that's how it's uh, it's taxed. And then there's um, a relatively new 1997 uh, uh, taxpayer relief at the Roth, Roth IRA, yeah. uh, which allows you to put money in after tax dollars in, and that money grows conceptually tax-free. So let's just say you have those three buckets of money. Right. Uh, taxable, tax-deferred, and tax-free. Conceptually, what you want to do is you want to keep your tax defer going for as long as you, as you possibly can. Why pay taxes when you can just let that money accumulate without right. paying taxes every year? You can take your distribution from your taxable account, which you're already paying taxes right. on. You're picking it up as you go anyway. You, you, right? Yep, so. and so you take the money from there, and if that's enough income stream to satisfy your cash flow needs, then that's a, a, a great spot to go to, first and foremost. The tax deferred, the IRA, 401k, SEPs, you can keep that money in there until your age of 70 and a half. At the age of 70 and a half, the, our friends in, in, yeah. in Washington Don't go say, dying without paying your tax, Exactly, days, right? that's right. They, <laughs> so, they come knocking and they right. say, okay, you're 70 and a half now, you gotta take a distribution. And, and, here, and here's the amount you gotta take. Yeah. You can take more your than minimum, this amount, yes, but yeah. you gotta take a required minimal distribution. So if you can defer your tax deferral till 70 and a half, that's a fantastic uh, use because you don't have to pay the taxes. And then the Roth IRA, the Roths are, uh, it's a fantastic uh, vehicle because you don't ever have to take the money out, nor do you have to pay taxes on it once you do take it out. So what we, we talk about if our clients have a substantial uh, taxable account, substantial qualified account, and the substantial Roth IRA, we try to use the Roth IRAs for big purchases. Yes. You know, let's take, you, you made a lot of money and it's tax free. Let's take it out and let's go on the big trip that you want to go on. Let's pick up the hobby you want to pick up right. and those type of stuff. So we take it from that bucket on, a, on an as need basis because it is growing tax free. And the, then the, now the big picture of this income distribution is what's going to happen or hopefully happen over a person's lifetime is they don't spend all their money. Right, they, they don't outlive their money. They right? don't outlive right. their money. And then they have to th start worrying about estate planning and they have to talk to you know their financial advisors or their, their CFPs and, and talk about how to distribute that money to their children. Maybe, maybe at that point they need to start taking distributions aggressively out of their IRA because the IRA is going to be taxed not only at the estate tax level but the income tax level to their children and so right. forth. So there's lots of lots of uh, uh, stretch IRAs. There's lots of different strategies you can use once you get to that that picture. But Yeah, and, that, and that's great. I mean, it's really important for anyone that that's about to retire is going to start needing they really get their team together, right? Their accountant because um, you know, the tax code's complicated. Social Security it could be taxable. It may not be taxable. Depend right. on your income. There's strategies to defer it, right? And, and people, it, it's hard. You just don't know. You have all these buckets of money, and you're like you accumulate. Now what, right? Now right. I have to go actually spend it. And right. where do you go spend it? So I think it, it's really important to, to have a, a you know a distribution strategy um, when mm -hmm. you get to retirement and figure out. Well, now I don't have a paycheck, <laughs> and I, now I need one, right? Right, so, right. Yeah, you got you create an income stream. That's right. What, what else is on your client's mind? What do you, what do you, what are they coming to you about? Well. I, I, I think you kind of touched based on it with uh, all the changes that we see all the time uh, in either regulations or taxes or, you know, we, we just watched our, our entire tax rate increase. Uh, we have the uh, Affordable Care Act, which added to the taxes. So I think, you know, I think there's an anxiety, if you will, right now in, overall in, in society that they're concerned about are we going to see more taxes? And if so, how much? And if so, how can we invest to either avoid or at least limit those taxes? Yeah, that's great. And, and also, I think we're also ch challenged by, you know, most of our clients have been burnt twice, right? The tech bubble, 
the you know Great Recession. And so they really think that's coming, just when, right? Sure. Uh, how do you get them over that? Like, that it doesn't necessarily have to happen again. It, it very well could, but... Yeah, um. yeah. Well, actually, I, I, you know, it's funny. I, it, you know, when we talk about uh, investment cycles, I, I really g go back to the data that we have. I mean, it is going to happen right. again, right? It's historically... It will. We, we right. will, right? <laughs> you know, uh, it's not a simple math, but it's it's really in, a, in a, every 10 years, and, and this is not a finite number, but you're going to have seven up years and three down right. years. Problem is, we don't know when the three are going to be down. Or, or what order. Or right. what order. Yeah. We can have six together or, or whatever. So I think if you educate uh, clients and if you show them that statistically this is what happens. Now, there's a myriad of reasons why these things happen, right? Uh, we don't like who's in office. We, we're at war with a country. Uh, the economy is just slowing down. It got too fat, dumb, and happy, and it needed to be pulled in or reined in. Uh, technology has totally shifted, and, you know, old technology is, is no longer needed or wanted and so forth. So the whole change in the workforce, there's a mirror of reasons for all these things. Bad government policy, good government policies, all kinds of, of reasons for this. But I think that if you show people that as the human race that we are, we do overcome these things. Right. We overcome famine, right? We overcome wars. We rebuild when, when something is destroyed. Uh, we come up with new and innovative ways of doing things. Uh, sometimes at spectacularly fast rates. Right, sure, <laughs> right. Uh, but we will overcome this. Uh, you know, I think you know, the, um, you know, a famous line uh, is, this too shall pass, and right. it does. And so I educate clients that, look, we are going to have something, but it's okay. Your portfolio is protected because we're not, we're not designing our strategy for that specific right. moment in time. We're designing it for 10, 20, 30 years, possibly more. And as it goes up, we're going to capitalize on that. As it goes down, we're going to capitalize on that. And you're going to be prepared, whether that you have ready cash that we can access, that you can take and spend or invest, uh, or we can take Let's, uh, we can lower your income that you're going to take from your portfolio so we don't do as much damage for longer term. Right. And, and you know, to bring that full circle, I mean, that's why the asset allocation is so important, right? Because if you can sit in your seat and any client that didn't need money in 08 and 09, right. what a buying opportunity, right? A dramatic buying opportunity. A shame opportunity. if you needed the money, right? right. But then right. your allocation was upside down, right? A so. Absolutely. And, and, well, and, and to your point is, those clients that need the money because you know their time horizon is shorter, right? That's right. really what we're talking about, yeah. a shorter time horizon. They were probably tickled pink because they were picking up nice bonds in 2004, right. 5, and 6, and 7 when people were really putting money into housing and, and yeah. other markets. Right, they should have had the cash and the bonds to, you know, because they need it. Exactly. So, great. Um, right, thank you. Um, next week, our guest is Denny M. Zoda. She um, is an MBA, Ph.D., for Medagnostics LLC, which is a life science consultancy company. Um, please tune in. It'll be a great show with great information. Um, I want to welcome our um, iTunes and um, Stitcher radio listeners. Uh, Money Matters is now available as a podcast on those as well as mobile devices. Um, it's also available on YouTube um, as well as our website, which is money-matterstv.com. And um, please join us again because your money matters. Thank you. Okay, great show. Thank you.